Looks like we're on. Hi, good evening and welcome to the YouTube channel for All Saints. Tonight we're going to spend some time with Sarah Miller and she's going to share with us um, a little bit about a practice that she does called art journaling. Um, so welcome. We're glad you're with us. So Sarah, you and I talked a little bit. Um, we actually started talking about this, gosh, it's been a couple months now, um, at Spiritual Formation, and you had shared with us a piece you had done in Art Journal as part of the prayer time during that meeting. So I'm wondering if maybe you could start with that, tell us a little bit about that story and, and how you brought that to us as part of our prayer. Sure. Um, yeah. And please forgive Bailey in the background. He's seeing something out the window and going nuts. So he's, <laughs> he's, he's participating here too. Um, but yeah, so I um, find what I shared with you here. So during our adult formation, um, one of the things we do is that we bring an object with us to um, put in the center of the circle and kind of draw our attention to it and lead us into prayer. Um, and so I had been doing art journaling. And so I brought my, um, I brought this uh, journal piece that I had done. Um, and it was one that I had just done, I think the day before or pretty recently. And um, I brought it because it had been um, kind of my spiritual practice for a while. And I've been, um, during the pandemic, it's been really hard for me to do my normal spiritual practices, prayer, meditation, centering prayer, um, those sorts of things have been really difficult for me. And in March, um, I'll tell you a story about it in a minute here, but I started doing this art journaling. And so I brought this as a kind of a representative piece of something that I had been doing that was helping me focus spiritually. And so it kind of started a conversation in adult formation um, and people are like, oh, I know so-and-so who's been doing something creative. And Annette said, oh, I've been doing the diamond dots and um, oh, I have a friend who's doing poetry. And so it kind of turned into a conversation about um, ways that a lot of people have been using art and creativity to, um, to help during the pandemic. And so um, we also, we talked about that that piece a little bit and said it was a little chaotic and you know what does it mean and that sort of thing and that was actually the most time I'd really spent looking at it so I've been mostly just doing and doing and doing and haven't really spent the time looking at it so that was a, a helpful thing for me. Good oh thank you so much so um, Sarah could you tell us a little bit about the process like how you said you just kind of picked it up um, but how did you start like what what kind of prompts you in your creation? So um, I started, I, I didn't intend to start art journaling, actually, back in March, um, I was looking at Instagram, and I thought, you know, I, I journal all the time, I, I have a, a phone app that I use to journal. Um, so I've been just writing, you know, text journaling for a long time, many years. And um, I was like, you know, maybe I, um, maybe I want to do a pen and paper journal again. And I had been looking on Instagram, and I Caught, something caught my attention is called bullet journaling and it's a system of journaling it's organizational you know you can basically keep all your stuff in one place and like oh maybe this could replace one of my systems that I use electronically um and so I bought a notebook that had the little dots in it and it's with the pages I can show you the pages I'm not sure you can see on here but the pages are dotted I'm not sure if you can see sure. the dotted pages right there we go and yeah so, Yep. So I bought one of those and I was like, oh, I'll start doing this bullet journaling process to organize my day. And you put the to do's and you organize yourself very neatly. And um, I actually have a slide I can show you um, that showed what happened. Um, so <laughs> let, me, let me show my 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 uh, presentation here. So this was my I did the, the how it started, how it's going meme, right? So the top was the bullet <laughs> journal, right? <laughs> And then after a few months, it looked like the bottom. So I figured, you know what? I totally failed at bullet journaling, completely and utterly failed. But it became it became something much better, I think. So um, yeah. that was my <laughs> that was my process. And so it, it ended up. I started being more creative. I started adding in um, different elements to the journal, stickers, and um, you know, I started drawing a little bit. And then I started using different kinds of pens. And so I started just from pen and paper, just and it got very creative after that. Um, and then I discovered the um, junk journal hashtag on Instagram. Instagram. Um, actually, I have a much that I can do this and I can stop. Um, this is my, my uh, junk journal. And so basically, this is how I started out. This is very soon after I started moving from just the text to, to doing this kind of thing. Just kind of pasting, um, pasting and gluing things in there, things that you find, pieces of, of washi tape, 
um, stuff that I rubber stamped, you know, stuff like that. And so it started getting a little bit more throwing pieces into it. Um, so that was kind of my next step there um, after that. And then it was just kind of, it was kind of a snowball effect from there. And I just kept getting more and more stuff and experimenting with more and more things. And uh, that's how that, that's how that uh, went there. So, okay. And I noticed that was uh, originally a bullet journal, as you said, yes. and you just kind of use that. So, um, so you didn't go out and buy new things, right? You just, you were using I, well, what you I, had. I did. I started using what I had and then I had a few art supplies here in the house. I had a little thing back here for my kids. I have you know, crayons and markers and watercolor paints and a couple stamps and things like that. Um, and as I started um, seeing more on Instagram, people doing it, I was like, oh, that looks like a cool combination. And so I did start to go and collect um, different art materials and I won't show you my office here because it is chock full of stuff now. So, um, so I did go out and buy stuff, but it was part of, part of it for me was the excitement of experimenting with the new medium. And um, I really hadn't had, had that in a long time. Um, I was really tired from COVID and I really hadn't had that curiosity and that excitement about new stuff mm. in a while and this kind of kick-started it kind of helped me oh what if I tried this medium or what if I you know oh this is a really cool stamp I want to see what else is out there right so okay. um it helped me to kind of uh, collect some new things a little bit so sure sure and I Sorry and I know that you're here. also you're also a spiritual director and you had mm -hmm. um at the beginning tonight, you talked a little bit about how you you weren't able to kind of keep up with your your regular your traditional um, spiritual practices that you had been doing with COVID and in that exhaustion that has happened to so many of us. So, um, could you tell us a little more about how this has become for you a spiritual practice? Sure. Yeah. Um, it's it's more. Um... If first of all, I mean, very generally, it helps me focus, right? So I, you know, I was very scattered. Um, and I, I feel like my thoughts have been really chaotic. I mean, this has been the pandemic has really been a liminal place for so many of us. It's an in between place. And we've talked a lot about that over the past few months. And it just feels to me in my mind, it feels like a lot of whirling chaos, right? Mm -hmm. And so being able to kind of get that chaos down on paper, um, without having to worry about what it looks like or what's going on has been very helpful to me. It helps me not to, you know, not to figure it out, but to just kind of get yeah. down there and kind of acknowledge the fact that things are very chaotic and this is kind of reflected in what I'm able to do. Um, it helps me um, using a different part of my brain. I'm a very, um, like a, I'm a very, I'm a five on the Enneagram. So I'm a very like, like mind centered person. I do a lot of reading, a lot of, you know, um, a lot of research and that sort of thing. And it really helped me get out of my head um, and kind of reconnect with um, my, my creativity. Cause usually I'm right. I do a lot of writing, um, a lot of um, academic writing and things like that. And so it helped me to really kind of shift gears and stop. I also do a lot of um, spiritual reading as part of a practice. And I couldn't, I just couldn't, I'm like, this is too much. I can't mm. handle, you know, whatever, whoever it was right now, I'm like, I can't handle it. And so it got me out of that place to kind of do, do something different. So, um, but yeah, and a key to that was really, um, it's also kind of helped me refocus on being observant um, of things around me because I'm looking, you know, I'll see things that's, I'm like, oh, you know, I'll think about painting and I'll think about, you know, doing, representing it somehow in my journal. Um, and I really, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to think that way. The thing that's been really key for me though, spiritually is um, <clears throat> I've basically, I, I told myself at the beginning, I just said, no rules. I cannot have any rules for this oh, okay. whatsoever. And I really was challenged, I think during the pandemic by thinking about productivity, because I felt like I wasn't being productive at work, you know, and I felt bad about that. And I just couldn't really, I didn't really have it in me to be super productive. And I just like this whole idea of productivity. And I said, nope, I'm not going to commit to like a page a day, or I'm not gonna make any rules, no rules whatsoever. And I'm not gonna, you know, if it's, if I don't think it's good, that's fine. I don't care. It's just going <laughs> to get down there and just you know, get out and I'm going to do it because I want to do it and not because I have to or meeting some standard or being productive. So it helped me to kind of get away from that feeling bad about productivity place that okay. I was in also. Sure, sure. Yeah. 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 And so uh, I, again, that kind of comes into what you and I were talking about before that idea of it's the process that really, um, it becomes more important than the actual product. Yes. Um, do you, do you find that often the case in spiritual practices or in developing those? 
Um, I think, I think that spiritual development is really all about the process, you know, Mm -hmm. about what we're going through because we arrive at some points, but of course we never arrive, right? Spiritually, we're always, (laughs) there's always, um, you know, there's always something else to learn. And so the learning and the journey are really the important thing. And so I think it was important for me to do that, um, as you know, with art to not worry about, you know, oh, I'm going to have an exhibit or I'm going to do, you know, like, no, I need to, I need to just do it for, for the process and whatever comes out, comes out. And of course I learned from that. So for me, it really kind of mirrors that, that spiritual process and not trying to aim for some kind of godly perfection that we're never going to attain. Right. But just keep going and see what the process tells you. So I I wonder too, maybe if it's that because you go in it with with the idea that there are going to be no rules, then that you really open up yourself um, to whatever comes. And I, and I, for me, I think that's it, the important piece of aligning with the spirit and, yes. and listening to that call within us to just, as you said, you know, I just want to get it out. There's so much going on. I just want to get it out and, and, and focusing on that pro- pro- process rather than the product, I think is that freeing that opening up. Yeah. It just helps it along, whatever it is. And it's just being open to whatever's there. Yeah. If I just scribble on the page one day, I just scribble on the page, you know, that's, that's where it is. And maybe it becomes something and maybe it doesn't, you know, sometimes (laughs) that process just takes over and, oh, that looks cool. Maybe I'll do a little bit over here, you know, just, you know, and just getting rid of those rules about, you know, I'm trying to make good art or whatever, just let it be what it is. So, right. Right. Yeah. And um, do you have some other samples you can share with us? Yeah, I have a slideshow here and Great. In, my, in my slideshow, I put um, the materials and the mediums that I use because part oh, of this good. has been, again, experimenting with new mediums and seeing what they look like. So I have a, I'll, I'll share my screen again here um, with my slideshow. Okay, so that was, yeah, this was one of my early, early examples here that I did. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, for those of you who don't know what washi tape is, it's really fun. This is, this is some of it that I have here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but um, it's just this tape that's removable. You can stick it down and pick it up again. You can cut it, you can tear it. It comes in very colorful patterns and it's really cheap. You can even buy it at the, buy it wherever the craft store, you can order it on Amazon. So I started buying some tape and I won't show you how much I have. That's just one roll. (laughs) But um, so I started using that a little bit and then some stickers and um, I started getting some rubber stamps as well and using those. Um, this one has a bunch of tape, uh, washi tape on the left-hand side. I also started printing out photographs um, and using mm-hmm. those a little bit. So um, I just have a regular inkjet printer. Um, and uh, at the thrift store, I would find, uh, you can find packets of photo paper. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big thrifter. And so um, I'm always grabbing things in the arts and crafts section there. So you can find, you know, for very cheap, you know, partially used packets of photo paper for your inkjet printer. And so I started printing off things and doing that. You can see I incorporate a little text in there. Um, this one, I got um, something called uh, Distress Ink, which is a kind of a cool kind of ink. And I'll show you one of these here. Um, we can show you the... Um, so this is Distress Oxide Distress. So you can get these at the craft shop. They react with water. And so you can see kind of on, on the right-hand side there, there's some water droplets in there that kind of um, make it, give it that distress look. Um, so I started experimenting with that. And then the bottom are rubber stamps. These trees are rubber stamps that I kind of stamped mm. over and over again there as well. And I kind of, I blocked out any, any of my personal writing. There's some of it's fine, but um, the writing's blocked out there. Um, this one, um, I included stencils. So um, you can buy stencils very cheaply at Walmart or any place um, and in the craft section. And I did that. I took a picture of this a picture of Mary that was on a plate that um, my boyfriend found me at the thrift shop, which I thought was kind of cool. And yeah. I put, and I was like, hmm, I wonder about Mary. So I put her on there and I just started doing things. Um, I started using acrylic paint at this point. You can see kind of mm-hmm. to her right, there's some paint there. And the white kind of coating on the bottom there is a uh, gesso, which is, um, it's a base, it's like a base for acrylic paint and you can use, a lot of people um, prime their canvases with it before they paint with acrylic paint. Okay. But it also, it makes a matte surface and so you can layer things on top of it and it kind of fades out your stuff and so you can put more and more layers on there. So I started wow. experimenting with that as well, yeah. Is that, I, you know, I've heard gesso before, is that fairly easy to work with? Yeah, it's, um, it's gesso here, it's just a, it's basically like white paint. If I open it, it just looks like white paint. It's very easy to work with. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And so this one, I started making um, handmade stamps. And so if you have craft foam, you can make these little 
this is a star one. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, little stamps you can just cut out with a exacto knife or scissors even. And then if you have a um, a ballpoint pen or an embosser, you can just uh, make designs on them and you just stamp oh, wow. them. Very, very, very easy to make and very satisfying. You just get that craft foam right at the store. Yeah. You yeah. can cut it into shapes and do whatever. And um, you can print out a little that that heron up there that's flying is a little picture I printed out and I just put it on thing, cut it out, right? And made a stamp out of it. So oh I did gosh. that. Yeah. So I started making stamps. Um, and then there's that's combined with a couple of the rubber stamps and stencils and things. Uh, watercolors. I started using some more tape. Um, okay. So one, you mentioned using yeah. the tape, but what about yeah. the other things that you're adhering to the page? Or what kind of adhesive are you using? It's like um, if it's a sticker, so, I'm assuming it's got a sticker background, right. but... You can either use, yeah, you can either use glue, like a glue stick like this that I have. It's a craft bond or um, as Joe was talking about, actually, in her um, presentation, she uses matte medium. And I also have some of that here. I have a matte, matte medium as well. And this is sold in the oh, okay. acrylic paint section. And this you brush on and it dries transparent. And yes, if you're doing more professional collage like Joe is doing, you definitely want to use something <laughs> like this. This helps too. This um, what I did on this one is a piece from a, of a travel brochure from the Everglades down at the bottom there. And it's that glossy paper. And sometimes the glue stick doesn't work super well on that glossy paper. Oh, so sure, sure. This, right? Yeah. So um, I've done that. Um, this one, I also used, uh, oil pastels. I don't know if these, I used to have these when I was a kid. Um, yeah. Here. And, um, yeah, they're basically like crayons, but they're, um, they're, they're oil-based. And so they, they're resistant to what you put over them. They're also kind of fun. You can smudge them around a little bit. So I started to use some oil pastels there. Um, Sharpie and I'm going to move this so I can kind of see what I wrote there. Um, yeah. So, so a trip brochure that I ripped up and stencils and that sort of thing. And, it's kind of doing that. Um, okay. Another question. Um, so when you're when you're kind of putting this together, do you you paste everything down first and write, or do you tend to write first and then put things around? I usually put things down first before I write. I usually leave a white space for writing, so I try oh, to leave okay. a space for that. And so sometimes I write and sometimes I don't. Um, so some of these earlier ones, see this one doesn't have any writing in there. I was leaving that right white space, but I actually didn't. Um, didn't um, write in that one because I looked at the way it was. But um, this one I also started doing, and um, I know Pastor Kid also does jelly prints. Um, I started oh. doing jelly prints, right? So those are, I'm not going to go into that tonight, but it's a whole other art form. But um, <laughs> I would, uh, they're kind of cool. You know, you can do all sorts of um, things with yeah. these, and um, they have all sorts of interesting textures and stuff like that. Um, so I would tear some of these up and use those as collage paper. Um, I've also used collage paper um, from, you know, can you scrapbook paper from a craft store? You know, a lot of them oh, are right. really on, on scrapbook paper. Um, so you can use that as well. And then, yeah, just the pieces of tape and different things kind of thrown in there. Um, but you can kind of see these were, these are kind of representing all that chaos that was going on in my head. Like they're <laughs> a little bit, a little bit chaotic, right? So um, this was another one I did. Um, I also, in my thrifting, oh, wow. I sometimes find typewriters and I have a few typewriters that I really enjoy. And so I did some typewritten oh. poetry and then I glued that in. I also did a photo transfer, which is a technique I, I learned on Instagram. You see that chipmunk on the, on the right hand okay. side there. That's a photo transfer. Wow. Um, then, so yeah, I'm experimenting with some more stuff. I also bought, I splurged. I did, I usually buy things very cheaply, but I did splurge and I bought a giant date stamp. Which I <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So I, I did splurge on this. And so it kind of adds a little bit to my, to my journal in there. <laughs> yep. Do you, do so. you find yourself going back and reviewing these or once they're done or that you just kind of, they're done? Um, sometimes if I really like one, I'll go back to it. If, if it was just like, Oh, whatever, I won't really spend a lot of time with it but that's actually something it was really neat to watch joe last night because she spent a lot of time reflecting on the content of her artwork mm, okay. um, and it was really interesting and i haven't really spent that much time reflecting on mine yet it's more of just just doing it and so i wonder if i'll go back and look at it um one thing that my spiritual director challenged me to do as the same spiritual director janelle as um as uh, joe does and she challenged me to take some intentional time before i start really and to kind of um, just mm -hmm. intentionally open myself and see if that makes a difference. And that does sometimes. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, so you never know what's gonna come out, but I haven't really revisited a lot of them in depth. Um, so 
I don't know if I will in the future. Sure. Um, yeah. So this one here, I had an old children's book, um, Chicken Soup with Rice. I don't know if anyone else had that one. Oh, I yeah. had that when I was yes. a kid, right? <laughs> and so I love that. And so I always think of this August one. And so I found it in the thrift shop. And I, and sometimes I rip the pages out of books, but this one I copied it because I want to keep it for something else. So I just made a color copy of the page. And then I ripped that up and, and put it in there um, and did a little writing myself. I also did some jelly printing right directly on the journal there as well. So I know you mentioned you often pick up older books, like at a thrift store or something, mm -hmm. and, and you maybe tear those up. So I, mm -hmm. I am also an avid book reader and collector. Mm -hmm. And and I do occasionally, not to this level, but um, I'll do blackout poetry with my kids in class. And so I'll buy yeah. the old books. But I have to tell you, every time I rip that page out, even though I know it's okay, <laughs> there's just something that happens inside that's like, you're destroying the book. So hey, how, hey, how do you get through that? I'm a librarian. I am merciless <laughs> with getting rid of books. So <laughs> I have, I mean, if it's a book, I know I'm not going to read. I mean, I'll, I have no problem tearing it up. And um, I have um, a couple, this one here, here's an example. This one was in bad shape. This one was at the retreat center that I go to. And it was in the, the pile of giveaway books. And it's this, all these pictures of like earth from above, right? but it's oh, in wow. terrible shape. Like the binding was already gone, you know, and wow. it's really ripped up. So I have no problem ripping out these pages and using them for stuff, okay. right? Um, I also got, and the thing is like, you know, you have an old dictionary, like I got this old, this old thesaurus here. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you can find this online. I mean, that's <laughs> being a librarian, I'll say the content you can find online, right? And these are, <laughs> these are a dime a dozen. So, I mean, I don't have any problem ripping these up. I also like the feel of the, the, the texture okay. of the older pages. Um, yeah. If you're going to do something for like as a keepsake, like these are these pages are acidic, a lot of these. And so sometimes it's not going to last for a long time. It'll yellow and, you know, mm -hmm. it'll react mm -hmm. to your materials. Um, but you can always make a photocopy. Of, if you don't want to rip up your book, you can just make a color copy or a black and white copy. And you can use that copy in your in your collage. So um, okay. you don't have to rip it up if you don't want to. <laughs> But no, I, everybody thinks, oh, librarians would never throw away books, man. We, we, we get rid of books all the time. So <laughs> I'm merciless. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll let myself yeah. go on that one then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Oh, so um, this one I've got up here. I also did some hand carved um, stamps. You can see them up in the top left-hand corner of the screen there. And then here's, here's one. And you can buy this um, oh my gosh. just lino cutting uh, block at the, um, you can get these on Amazon for super cheap or you can get them at um, the craft store. Um, and so I saw these and so I started mm -hmm. making my own stamps. And so those yellow stamps on there are ones that I carved. Wow. And then I also started cutting my own stencils. Um, and so that branch on there, at the one at the bottom and the one across the center is a stencil that I cut out. Um, you can buy a stencil blank and got that in here. It's all, it's all messy from my jelly printing. I'll see if I can get it out. <laughs> but um, I've got the stencil that I cut out here. So here's a stencil that I've cut, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, so you can just cut that out with an exacto knife. You can print off a, um, you know, a black and white silhouette from online and you can, mm -hmm. you know, put that on there and cut it. And usually it's modified enough that, um, I know Joe was worried about copyright with doing some of those things yesterday. You can modify it somewhat and then it won't be a, a problem. Um, so yeah, so I cut those out um, and I, I doodled in one and then I, you know, filled it out traditionally in the other part. So those are a couple different things you can do. You can also purchase stencils. Um, they have them at Meijer, they have them at Walmart, again, craft stores, anywhere you go. There's also great selection on Amazon. Um, so um, lots of different, lots of different ways that you can do that. You can also make a stencil out of an index card if you want to, you know, you can just get an index card and, and cut out a shape um, and use that for a stencil as well. So that's that one. And um, I, I heard you ahead. mention something about the pens that you used because uh, there are so many pens to choose from. Do you just use a oh, regular yeah. pen? Do you? Well, um, you can use anything you want. I've used, I've used Sharpie. I've used, there's some, there's some paint pens that I've used. If you want to write, if you want to do lighter colors on top of darker colors, mm -hmm. um, they sell paint pens. And if you buy an oil-based paint pen, that writes very well on top of, um, on top of other colors. Like I have a white one that's not in here right now. Um, but there are other, there are other paint type markers too. I bought these, um, I just have a white uh, water soluble 
marking pencil that I use sometimes to use white. Um, I experimented, I got this, uh, this uh, China marker um, that I got, this is a grease pencil. Um, oh, yeah. Some of them, you can, use, you can use a white crayon, right? Any kind of resist. Um, so you don't have oh, to buy yeah. fancy stuff, but you can, um, yeah, you can use white crayons as well. Um, whatever you have white colored pencils lying around the house. So yeah, there are different kinds of, it's been fun learning about how the different uh, materials react with one another. So I've done a little bit of that. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, this one I used alcohol markers. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, those are a little different kind of marker and they go through the page. So um, they, they saturate the page. So that's another uh, thing that you, that you can do, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how, what kind of suggestions do you have for someone if they were, um, exploring and thought maybe this might be a good way or a good thing to incorporate into their current spiritual practice or practice some, bleh, let me try again, perhaps something new to try. So how could they do that? Um, so it doesn't, I, I guess I'm speaking more, a little more from personal experience, as I said, um, when I buy a new notebook or something, there's something about seeing that first blank empty page that just makes me freeze. So yeah. how could yeah. someone, yeah. you know, like me, pick up a book and say, you know, I want to try this. So how can I, how could I work through that? There are a couple, yeah. this is a very easy entry, low barrier type of thing. But yeah, when you see a blank page, sometimes it's, it's really hard. Right. So, I mean, the first thing I would say is it doesn't have to be good. You don't have to draw something, right. You don't have to have a likeness of something. I mean, there are two very, very easy ways to start this. I mean, you could just take a blank page and take, I'm going to take this red crayon and scribble. There, I started. <laughs> right? If I wanted to, I can go and fill in these spaces with another color and just make a little doodle, right, that I that I did. Uh -huh. That's something to do, right? You could take a piece of paper. You could take a piece of paper from a magazine or a piece of scrap of paper or whatever and just rip it up and glue them down and stick them however you want in your journal. And take another piece of paper and do some more. It just it's very, just, just start, right? Um, and it doesn't have to be anything. Um, sometimes I go through my materials and think I have all these supplies here. I'm like, what, what kind of medium do I want to do today? Do I want to like use my watercolors to just make a wash and see what the colors do? Or do I want to, is there a cool stamp I want to use and do that? Sometimes you can either, even if you have a stamp, you can just like make a tiling pattern, you know, hmm. you can take a, let's see what I have here for a stamp. Um, there's a small one. It's like a little, like a, a mandala stamp, right? You could just take it and you could stamp just, you know, just make a tile pattern, you know, and make a background or something. So um, what you put down on the paper, it doesn't have to be a final product. It could be a background for something else. It could just be what it is. It could just be a scribble on the paper. I mean, there's, there's, there's no, you know, there are no rules, right? And so, I mean, basically like I just, I just journaled something. If I wanted to, I could take a pen and then write on top of it, you know, mm, okay. um, whatever. So um, it's not, it, it's, yeah, it's just key to not, and if you see something that you like, you're like, oh, this sticker might look cool. And they just put it on there. You know, I mean, there are no, like I said, it doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be representational. It doesn't have to match. The colors don't have to look good together. Like just do something. Right. So, right. and I mean, I might, I mentioned that like I, I had, you know, art training when I was a kid, my mom's an artist and um, you know, I've taken a lot of art classes and stuff over the years, but this was not really, so, I mean, I've, I'm used to doing some things I you know, can see things where they, where I want to put them and stuff, but I'm not using any of that training consciously, you know, I'm just mm. letting myself do whatever I, I, I feel I want to do. So, um, I'm also, something that was interesting about this too, is that I'm also trained as a classical musician. I studied music in, in college and, um, I was very much focused on being good at it. Right. Ah, so you okay. are, you want to do it properly. You want to use the right technique. Um, <laughs> you want to, you know, you have to be competitive. You have to do better than the other person if you want to get the job or the, you know, um, and you have to, so there is, there is a lot of that, a lot of critique um, going on in that. And of course that's necessary if you're going to do that professionally, but this for me really helped me get away from that. I didn't want to do that with my art, you know, mm. because I'm like, I don't want anybody to critique this because it's, it's not, it's not intended to be good, right? It's just intended to be what it is. So um, that was really helpful for me too, to kind of get out of that, you know, um, super training. So 
you know, if you already are an artist, I don't know if this would be effective or not. It just depends on, you know, where you're at spiritually and emotionally with your creative process. So, um, yeah, but anybody can do this. You can do whatever you want and it doesn't have to look like this. It's really kind of fun to, to look at Instagram too and see like there's like a junk journal hashtag um, okay. and you can look that up and people are like, you know, they do all sorts of stuff. You know, hmm. some people are like super advanced, you know, and they do, you know, they make their own journals and they, you know, they, it's crazy and they sew things wow. and this and that. Um, and other people, they just do a doodle and they have a line notebook. You do a doodle and you're right, you know, and that's it, you know. Um, and so people are really brave to put that stuff up there. It's great. You know, it's very raw and um, you're able to see, you know, different things that folks do. Yeah. So if you're okay with using social media as an inspiration rather than as a challenge and something that makes you feel bad about yourself, yeah. um, then it's a good way to do that. But if, if social media is not something that if you makes you feel competitive or whatever, it's probably not a good way to look at that. Sure. And you mentioned um, that you, you could start by setting your intention, an intention before you begin. So could you, yeah. could you talk a little bit about what that might mean, especially uh, incorporating this as a spiritual practice? What does it mean to set the intention? Well, uh, for me, it really just, it, it, for me, it's clearing my mind. Mm -hmm. And the intention is for whatever creative spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit wants to be at that point to, to work through me, right? So um, I just, uh, for me, it's an intention toward openness. Um, and I just, I wanna be present to this and I wanna, you know, the next thing I'll do is, is like look at my materials and like, oh, and I just, you know, I start and then maybe I take a different direction but I wanna be open to that direction when, when I feel prompted to take a different direction or feel prompted to use another type of medium or feel prompted to use a different color or something like that. I wanna be open to that process. So for me, just the openness of it is key. And that's really what I set my intentions for. I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to come out a certain way or to be a certain way. I just want to be open to that, that process and that, that um, whatever the spirit wants to do. So what has surprised you in this creative adventure that you're on? Uh, um, I was surprised by how long I've stuck with it um, <laughs> because I get on, I, I do things in waves, like, I get on, like, I'll, I'm also a knitter, so I'll, like, start knitting, and then, like, after a while, I'll get tired of it, I won't do it for another six months, you know, and then I'll do it again. Um, for me, I like to do, I, I have lots of different hobbies, and I alternate between my different hobbies, and this one has stuck around the longest, and um, once I start feeling obligated to do something, I stop wanting to do it, mm. um, and so the thing about this is I haven't felt obligated. I want to do it. Like, I want to come in here and be creative, and I want to stare at my paper and, you know, think about what I want to do. So it's helped me to, um, it's been consistent without me having to try and, you know, discipline myself into doing it all the time. So I'm really surprised that, um, it's been, you know, over half a year and I've been doing this regularly and that's, that's a long time for me to stick with one, one thing. Good. Oh, great. Um, I'm just kind of looking through questions here. Pastor Kit's been putting a few in the chat for me. Um, so it sounds like you've always had, had a creative streak. Is this something that you share with your kids? Do they get involved in this at all? Or is this something that is just, just sort of for you? Um, it's just sort of for me, but they're happy that I have more art supplies around the house now. So <laughs> for example, like, like, um, you know, my, my kid Ender came in the other day and saw, I had bought a bunch of alcohol markers and they're like, Ooh, can I try those? Yeah. I'm like, sure. I said, you know, don't, you know, ruin the tips or whatever. I said, make sure you put a little thing underneath and this, yeah, but go ahead. You can try those. And so they've been, um, they've been wanting to come in. The more things I've accumulated in here to kind of play with, they've one, been wanting to come in and, and work on them too. So um, I haven't like, you know, and it, the, the more, the more variety of things I have, the more likely they're, they're they're, they are to come in here and start working on something. So um, I think it's, I haven't tried to directly, you know, say, okay, let's all do this now. Right. But they've, mm, they've kind sure. of come in and, and done it on themselves and they see my cool supplies and they want to try them. So, yeah. But I mean, I would think that's kind of a, a nice little side benefit too, is you, you do get that, that kind of special time with the kids that are, and you're sharing something with them and, um, right. You know. right. And it's something that I'm not telling them. So I think telling them to I'm always, do, I'm always right. like, you know, kids, kids, you know, and so, so this is something that they're kind of picking up just 
um, as a thing, which which makes me feel good about it. So good, good. So any other suggestions you might have for people or um, ideas? I know you've given us quite a few things and, and um, supplies, ideas, ways to get started. Yeah, I, have, uh, I think I have like one or two more slides here. So okay. like, yeah, this one, this is one of my last ones here. So oh, wow. like um, this was um, the dictionary pages that I cut yeah. out. I okay. really, really like doing this. And I think this was a tie in with um, with the the um, blackout poetry too, because I really like taking oh. pre-existing words and using those in there. And so I, what I really liked about using these dictionary pages in the background was that um, was it the words like the words started popping out at me, right? So like in here is a close up, and so like you see, there's like profanity in there, right? You know, so and there's <laughs> like you know there's all sorts of interesting words that that pop out to me, and sometimes I try to highlight those, or sometimes they just kind of come out when I make a you know mark somewhere else or whatever. Um, so that was kind of fun for me. And here's another picture of some of the um, you know there are different words that can that that pop out when you use these the dictionary and thesaurus pages. So I really kind of mm -hmm. like that process as well so yeah if you can't think of something to do just like get an open just rip up the pages or make the copy and rip up the pages put them down there um start drawing on them or scribbling on them or making lines or whatever you want to do or making different kinds of marks um and you know you never know what's gonna what's gonna come out um i'm gonna i'll stop my share now but but yeah um, my i mean my advice really is just to just to do something right and i know the blank page is scary um, if you want, like put ink on your hand and make a handprint. I mean, you know, <laughs> anything you can start, you can start any way that you want to. If you have an ink pad, yeah, make fingerprints. I mean, I've, I've seen people fill an entire page with a pattern of fingerprints, right. As oh, a background wow. okay. and then just draw on it, like do whatever you want on there. So, and don't be afraid. The thing is too, I mean, sometimes with me, I'm like, oh, I can't go in any further because I like it like it is. But then one thing I've done is like, let myself keep going. If you don't like it, keep going, put more on there. You can put as many layers on there as you want. Sometimes I go a little too far and I'm like, okay, I ruined it, but you know, who cares? <laughs> you know, you might've ruined it, but it wasn't really for anything. So it's just for you. So you learned about, you know, you learn more about when to stop and, you know, just that process. So um, yeah, just keep going. If you don't like it, put more stuff on there, <laughs> whatever it is, <laughs> throw it on there. It's just, you know, letting yourself uh, do whatever you want to do. But yeah, starting, like I said, you can scribble, you can rip up a piece of paper and stick it on there. You can use ink, whatever. You can do an ink blot. I mean, you can just start yeah. by just making some mark. I mean, most, most folks doodle, you know, when they're taking notes or whatever. And, um, you know, so we've all done little things like that. You can just start doodling, you know, you mm -hmm. don't have to make a thing. You can if you want to, but whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really um, like what you said particularly about the competition, because I, I will find myself in that position as well. Like, um, you know, I'll see something, I'll be like, Oh, I want to do that. But, Oh gosh, they're so good. I could never be that level. But what I'm hearing you say is that's okay. We're not all supposed to be totally that level. Fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, no. And it's not, I mean, like I said, I've had art training and so people are like, Oh, your stuff is nice. I'm like, well, you know, I've, I've done it for a long time, but I mean, like my first, you know, look like you're like my first ones were not that awesome like <laughs> here's one that I was not very happy with it's just like basic doodling right I wasn't and I, but I, I didn't care I just wanted to draw instead of just write and I was still doing some of the bullet journaling stuff right mm -hmm. and so I wasn't super excited about some of these that I did um but you know it, it evolved and you know some of these I'm not some of these are more simple than others and some of these just, I mean, this was just one I did with just some stickers and writing, right? So they can be very simple. You don't have to do a lot. You don't have to be super elaborate. Sometimes I do like those big intense collages that have layers and layers and layers. And sometimes I just put like a sticker on there and just write. So um, yeah, it doesn't have to be something mind blowing. I mean, just, just do it. Right. And then of course my poor journal looks like this when I filled it up. <laughs> But I would recommend getting a journal that has um, some of these mediums will bleed through, especially if you use things like alcohol markers. Um, so I would I would recommend getting a journal with some sturdier paper. Um, you can use a lined one if you want. You can use a blank one if you want. You can use, you know, whatever the dotted one if you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but 
you know, do whatever. And then, then I spent some pages just like swatching some of my inks, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. If, yeah, you can take your markers and be like, just, you know, make a little dot with each color and write what it is. I mean, you can, it's not, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. So, yeah. And you yeah. mentioned um, that you had a, a few art supplies. Do you think this is an expensive thing to do? I mean, I, I guess for me, I would look at it and think probably the most you're going to spend the money on right away would be the journal itself. Yeah, you, the you can use itself, a notebook, but the pages aren't going to be thick. Yeah, you can use a notebook to start if you want to. Um, yeah, journals are are on sale a lot at um, these journals. I got on sale at Michaels, I believe, and they were like like uh, four or five bucks. Okay. So weren't too bad. Um, but you can start anything. You don't even have to keep it in a journal. You can just do it on random paper you have lying around if you want to. Okay. Um, and then you can like punch holes and put them into a binder. You can get three hole, you can get three ring binders for a dollar at the thrift store as well. Um, sometimes you can get journals and notebooks there too, um, that maybe have like a few pages written in, or you can tear them out. Um, yeah, it can, it can get expensive if you want to branch out into a certain medium, like, um, for example, like there's some types of acrylic paints that are really expensive and then they're the kind of Walmart for a dollar. Right. So they're, you know, <laughs> it just depends yeah. on how, how into it you get and how much you want to do. But for anyone with kids, um, a lot of folks with kids have art supplies lying around the house. You can use crayons, you can use, you know, watercolor paints, you can use Crayola markers, um, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, my mom sent me, um, my mom has a house full of art supplies. So she sent me a bunch of rubber stamps. And so I had some of those. Okay. And I've actually been, I don't know if I want to give away my secret, but at the thrift shop, sometimes they'll sell large bags of rubber stamps in the craft section. And I've gotten okay. some huge hauls of rubber stamps for, you know, six bucks a bag and you get like 30 stamps in there. So wow. it's, yeah, you can, you can, you can find them. And part of, part of this for me has been, you know, the thrill of the hunt, you know, going to the thrift store, like, oh, look at me, lots of craft supplies. Um, but you can use, I mean, you can use found stuff too. I mean, you can use, uh -huh. you know, if you have a stamp pad, I mean, you can like, I used the top of my glue stick the other day, this round part, uh -huh. to make impressions on something, you know, oh, okay. you can use, use whatever you want. Yeah. And I, I've heard um, other people have said they'll they'll rip up their junk mail. Like I've noticed I'm getting mm -hmm. a lot of election stuff right now. And some of the pictures are really nice. Yes. And you can use, you can rip up your junk mail. You can rip up your circulars. You can rip up those catalogs you get. You can also save your, um, save your junk mail. Envelopes. I saw this on, on YouTube. You can save the, uh, the window from your, your junk oh, mail sure. envelope and cut it out and use it as a pocket. And you can put, I got these stamps. You can put it into the pocket and keep it like that, right? Wow. Okay. So yeah, so that you can you can use your junk mail in all sorts of interesting ways. Um, wow. Yeah. So whatever catches whatever catches your eye. So it doesn't have to be a super pricey endeavor, um, but um, there are ways. It it can be if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be depending on where you, you know. I just I like kind of the the just the serendipity of finding some cool thing, you know. <laughs> that I can, that I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good. I really appreciate you taking the time to share with us and show us and um, give us something new to think about. You know, I, yeah. I, I do think there is something to be said about a tactile response. Um, and I find for me, that's important too, as part of my spiritual practice is, um, well, maybe it's because I'm an extrovert. I don't know. But <laughs> Sometimes just the sitting to praying just doesn't, doesn't feel like enough. Like I, I feel like I want to feel it in other parts of my body. And I'm thinking that this might be a good way to do that, where I have that more tactile, that more tangible feeling of being with the spirit. Yeah, I think it's good too. I think it's also a good intermediate thing between something maybe like yoga, where it's um, all physical and then the more mental activities of, you know, mm -hmm. prayer and reading. And so, so it's kind of an in-between uh, thing there as well because sometimes folks aren't quite ready for the like super physical stuff or um, maybe you, you are that way and you want to kind of transition to a more contemplative practice um, this might be a way to, to transition to that too oh that's a really good thought oh, I hadn't thought of that so yeah well great is there any any last words for us Sarah any <laughs> words of wisdom to impart on this summer uh fall cool evening here <laughs> yeah well no it doesn't have to be good nobody needs to see it except you and you don't have to be happy with it just leave it is what it is right um you don't judge your own stuff um it's a good practice in being not judgmental of yourself or your work um it doesn't have to look like a specific thing 
Um, it can just look like a bunch of stuff on a paper and that's completely fine. So <laughs> there we go. the, more, like the more you do it, the more you'll see patterns in your work and, um, you know, things that draw you and stuff like that. So yeah, just, 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 if you want to do it, just start and you don't have to show anyone. You do not have to share it on social media. You don't have to show anybody. Um, it's just for you. Great. So. Well, again, thank you so much. And thank you for sharing and, and giving us some great ideas tonight. Of course.